Hey everyone, welcome back to Andrina's Creations. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to get a PNG image or a JPEG image and convert it into a layered cardstock project. Not so long ago, I posted a project that I made of Chucky, Freddy Krueger, and since then, I also added one of Michael. Everybody asks me if I can do a tutorial on it. Today, I will use another image and show you how to do it, but the difference is today, I will be using a more simple image so you can get the concept on how to do it. I might do a second video with a more advanced image, but today, I will keep it more beginner friendly. You can use these images for any paper crafting projects, such as centerpieces, put them on cake toppers, gable boxes, 3D letters, and lots more. You can make them as big or small as you would like. These are great if you don't have a printer because you will not be printing any pieces, but you can go that extra mile and customize them even more and add printed designs to some layers. For your supplies, you're going to need Silhouette Studio Business Edition. Some of the tools I'll be using are only available in Business Edition. Basic Edition is free. I have the link down below on how to download it. And if you would like to upgrade, I will also leave the link down below. Business Edition is a one-time payment and can be used up to three devices. And you do not need a cutting machine to use it. If you want to follow along and have a Cricut cutting machine, by having Silhouette Studio Business Edition, you can save your project as an SVG and open it up in Cricut. You will also need a variety of car stocks. I highly recommend using 80 pound or 100 pound with your solid colors. It just gives it a very more better result because I feel like 65 pound is very flimsy. You will also need metallics, glitter, and pattern car stock if you choose to. Some foam dots or foam squares, and even foam board if you would like that extra thickness. You can find all those at your local Dollar Tree and at any craft store. I'm going to be using hot glue to adhere the foam board because I do want mine with an extra thickness, but you can also use hot glue for your foam dots and squares. If you want to print out a design on one of your layers, you are going to need a printer and some printer paper. Make sure that the printing paper that you get, it is compatible with your printer. First thing that you need to do is go ahead and over and get your image. I just went to Google or Microsoft Bing and I searched cute witch clip art. Then I clicked on images and I'm going to select on this one. As you can see, this image is a PNG image, meaning that it's a transparent background image. When you see the white, when you see the white and the gray rectangles behind it, that means it is a PNG. You must right click and save this image. Make sure that you know the folder that you're going to be saving it on. Then you're going to type the name and click on save, okay? Then you're gonna go ahead and over to Silhouette Studio and there's two different ways on how to bring in an image. You can either go to file and merge and then look for the folder that you just saved that image or if you just save the image, you can go down here to your quick access folder and then locate the image, click on it, and just drag it into Silhouette. As you can see, this image came in pretty big. So up here, you're gonna have the magnifying glass, the plus sign, and the minus sign. I'm gonna click on the minus sign so I can zoom out. And I'm going to select my image. And once you select your image, you're going to see that your image has like little white squares all around. I'm going to grab from the corner and just drag it down to make it smaller. Never drag from the middle to not distort your image. Right here is the undo button. And I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to zoom in. Remember in Silhouette Studio, you're able to design all around your gray area. You don't only have to uh, design inside of your canvas. When you are ready to cut or print, that's when your items have to be here in the canvas. Your screen might look different than mine, and that is because I'm on dark mode. All the way down here on your right, all the way down, you can switch from light to dark. Okay, so this is your image. You're going to decide if you want to do the full image or just the face. For today, I'm only going to do the face because I don't want the process to be very long. All right, so I'm gonna put my original image here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and duplicate the image, okay? I only want her face, so I'm going to zoom in. I'm gonna go here to my left I'm going to grab the eclipse shape and I'm going to make the eclipse, eclipse shape around her face. Okay. 
once you double click on something you're going to activate the edit points so i'm actually going to double click on the eclipse and you're going to see this like little gray squares around it and then you are able to i'm going to click on simplify and i'm going to drag up because i don't want her clothes and none of that i just want her face And you can actually click to make more little gray um, squares. Then I'm going to drag this one down and make another one right here. I think that's fine right there. I'm going to click somewhere else to get off the edit point. And then I'm going to click here somewhere on my screen and drag my mouse to select the eclipse and the image. If you don't know if you have everything selected, you can see rectangles all around everything that you have selected. Once I have both things selected, I'm going to go here to my right to my modify icon that looks like a rectangle and a circle. And I'm going to click on crop. Okay. And as you can see now, I only have her face, which we can go here and also delete all that. Like I said, I only want her face. I'm going to teach you a little bit here about the knife tool. So I'm going to go here to my left, grab the knife tool. I'm going to click where it says solid. Then where it says straight here, I'm going to click on poly. And where it says auto apply, I'm going to unselect that and I'm going to zoom really in and I'm going to start right here and I'm going to click and then you're just going to go ahead and keep on clicking, making sure that you just take your time around the curve on her face. When you're done, just double click at the end and then make sure that your line is still selected. The reason why I have it um, unselected the auto apply, because if I wanted to be able to move this cut line, I can, but let me undo. And then I'm going to click here on apply. Once you click on apply, you could delete this part and you're done here. Okay. So let me zoom back out. So you don't have to do so much at the end. I recommend sizing your image now before you start taking all the layers apart. And what I mean by that is if you're going to, depending on where you're adding this image, like I said, I know a lot of people have been asking me, what is the purpose of this? Like I said, a lot of people love paper crafting and they just want the image fully out of cardstock. They don't want to print nothing out. So depending on where or what you're doing this for remember to size it first i'm just gonna cut her out on an 8 by 11 cardstock like i want all my pieces to be as big as 8 by 11 so i'm gonna go ahead over here to my right click on the page setup where it says media size i'm gonna select 8 by 11 because that is the paper size that i'm going to be using now i'm also going to rotate this to the orientation to landscape okay and i'm going to select the cutting mat on 12 by 12 mat now i'm going to grab her put her right here and remember do not pull from the middle uh, only pull from the corners Okay, once you have her um, sized, I highly recommend duplicating this one first because just in case you do any mistakes, you still have the original image that you um, only have the head of, okay? So again, you gotta right click or duplicate or you click on the Alt key on your keyboard and just drag, all right? So this image is gonna stay here. Now let's start breaking her up into layers. When you are doing this by layers, you have to see what color you want all the way in the back and what color you want to be coming towards the front. Everyone's going to choose a different color. All right. And you're going to see as I go. 
to me i feel like the color white is the last color like is that the color white is all the way in the back okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate this image and this color this the back layer is going to be white and this is the fill icon that looks like the paint palette okay so here we have it we have the first layer right and put this over here your next step is because we have the layer white is now to remove the color white out of the original image and then you're gonna go here to your trace icon that looks like a butterfly some people call it like a toast let's call it a toasted butterfly so we're gonna click on here and right here your second option is the trace by color it looks like a little dropper you're gonna click on trace by color you're gonna come over here and click on the color white that is the middle of her eye wait a little bit and when you see everything's uh turn yellow you can click up here on the tolerance as well you can bring it up or down to make sure that everything is selected in the color white and you're going to click here where it says trace and detach click on it and delete on your keyboard and you're going to repeat the same step with the other eye now you're going to choose what's the next color you want your next layer to be for me i want the color black i feel like the next layer should be right here th this part of her eye and this part of her nose and mouth not her hair yet okay but if you want the next layer to be her hair you can but i feel like before her hair it's her skin color but i do feel like this part of her eye it's before her skin if that makes sense it's all about the visual okay so you go with whatever layer you want. Like I said, I want the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And right here, part of her chin to go next. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this image. And I'm going to turn this one black. Okay? And I'm going to center it. I'm just going to select these both. Go here to the transform icon and click on center. Because we have used the color black, now we have to remove what color black we want from here. So again, back to the trace icon click on trace by color and click right here let me zoom in and i'm gonna go just a little bit up on the tolerance uh, not so much there you go trace and detach click there and delete repeat the same steps I said I also want her mouth out and I want all this out you see that all that out I want it to be out and I'm just gonna click trace and detach move her up and delete all that as you can see when I removed all that and I'm going to zoom in so you can see very good these lines were left behind you have to remove those lines because then that's gonna be there added to your pieces of cardstock when you cut those out and then all you have to do is again click on your knife tool make sure it's on solid poly unselect auto apply and then go right here click and just go as close as you can double click and apply so that is cut off and then it's not going to automatically remove because or did it yeah that part did so you're going to click on that part and delete and you still have some part here and you gotta do the same steps right here right here is the mouse with the magnifying glass you just click on it and click exactly where you want it to zoom in go back and get the knife tool I'm just gonna click somewhere here and keep on going up and double click and click on apply then delete that part and you're going to repeat the same steps right here you see inside of the eye some part was left there you don't want that there as well 
get the knife tool okay once you're done deleting or cutting those parts out then that's it that's all the black part that i wanted to have on that layer and now you're going to choose what you want your next layer to be for me i feel like now the green should go next so i'm just gonna right click and duplicate and if you want to be choosing the same color of your images all you have to go here is on your paint fill icon click on the dropper and click on that same color green but remember it doesn't matter the colors that you add here on the screen because it depends on the color car stock you add to your mat to cut but for now i'm just coloring everything like it is here so y'all can see the progress all right so let me select everything and center it and now your next step is because you use the color green on your next layer you have to delete the color green from the image so you go to your trace icon, click on the dropper, trace by color, and click on the color green. If you need to go up a little bit on your tolerance, go ahead and do so. And then click here where it says trace and detach. Click on the green and delete on your keyboard. As you can see, a lot of stuff was left behind. So make sure, let me pull this up. Make sure that you're deleting everything as you go. So I'm just gonna select everything and click delete on my keyboard. And let me zoom in just a tad bit here. And I see like that was left behind there. So there's two different ways you can do that. You can use the knife tool or even your edit points. So if I double click, my edit points will be activated. And if I click here on that uh, gray little rectangle, I could click um, delete on my keyboard as you can see. And that got deleted. And uh, let me look around. All right, now your next step is because you deleted the color green, now you have to see what your next color is going to be. For me, it's gonna be her hair, and I know here on the image, it's like a darker gray, but I'm just gonna go with the color black. So I'm just gonna right click and duplicate and color this the color black. And it's going to go right here. And then because that is her hair layer, now we have to remove her hair layer the color black and i also want to delete these lines right here i want those lines to come off and these lines right here i don't want the buckle of the hat yet on that layer because i feel like that's more forward than the hair if that makes sense like i feel like the hair is behind the buckle all right so again go to your trace icon click on the trace by color click on that color Put up your threshold, I mean uh, tolerance, and click on trace and detach. And remember, you can choose as many layers as you would like. As you can see here, all this was left behind, so we have to remove it. You can be using the knife tool or the erase tool, but I just like using the knife tool. I'm going to zoom in, click here, and just go down, double click, click on apply, and delete that. Again, I want this to be removed, so trace by color, click on there. All that has to get removed, so the knife tool. You can see that the line of the knife is too thick right here, 
So you could go here to your line style, which is under the paint fill icon that looks like three little lines. It says line style. You see the thickness right now is on 0 0.85. I'm going to go down on that cut line. And now, and you can also fix it. And then click on apply. All right. And as you can see, I'm going to click to get the edit point and I'm going to click on this one and click on make a curve because I don't want this to be so flat. So it could be more of a curve than just like a cut rectangle. So you can also be always double clicking to activate your point editing and then fix some of the stuff. Okay. Let me zoom out. And we also have to remove this one here. So again, trace by color and select that part there. And you see here it's too sharp. So I'm going to double click to get on the point editing and I'm going to click on one of them and make it a curve and again I'm going to actually delete some of those let me zoom out Okay, remember, I also don't want this line and this line, okay? But if you look closely, this line right here is going to connect with the buckle. So I need to make sure that I only get this line here. So I'm actually not going to use the trace by color because if I click on the trace by color to get this line, it's going to want to graph all that. So we're just going to use the regular tracing method, which is the first, we're going to go on the trace icon. And the first one, it says select trace area. With this one's a little bit different. You had to make a box to select. So I'm just going to make a box here and I'm actually going to be rotating rotating it and kind of like that for now and the threshold is too high because it's actually selecting everything I'm gonna go down because I only want to grab that black line and I'm gonna click on trace and detach Click on that and delete. And then I have to zoom in and do it one more time here, but smaller. Okay, let's go ahead with the knife tool. Remember, I have it on solid, poly, auto apply. Let me zoom more in. As you can see, I left a little bit of black there, so I'm just gonna click on here and keep on clicking. And I could actually just go ahead and cut that. Let me go to the line and bring that down because the thickness was too much. have to do the same steps on this side so again I'm gonna use the regular tracing icon make a box
make sure that anytime you're tracing and deleting stuff that you're deleting everything that's left behind so if i will try to select everything here you'll see that my uh, mouse is picking up little stuff right here so i'm gonna hold the shift key and click on the hat and only that is selected and i'm gonna click delete because if you have all those little trash behind when you're gonna get ready to cut your machine is gonna be cutting those little pieces out as well now i also want to delete all them black lines up here as well and i'm gonna i'm gonna show you what it will do if i click on trace by color click on here see it will select all that black because it's attached all right i'm gonna leave it like that and i'm also gonna show you something so i'm gonna leave it like that and i'm just gonna click on trace not trace and attach because if i trace and attach all that's gonna get removed i'm just gonna click on trace remember i choose the trace by color option right now and i'm gonna click on trace right right now everything that's selected was traced all right i'm gonna click on the actual image i'm gonna uh right click and i'm gonna click on cut the image is still there so don't worry i'm gonna zoom in and i only want those lines so i have to cut this right here so you can go ahead and grab the knife tool and the reason why i like to have it on solid is because when i cut right here it will make it a solid cut and i'm gonna show you the difference as that as well so i'm gonna switch it to outline and if i cut double click and apply if you look very carefully the lines are opened and you don't want that you want a line to be closed okay so let me undo and let me go back to the knife tool and click on solid and zoom in and I want my cut right here double click and apply now you see it's a solid cut not the outline right and now we're going to do the same steps for the other side maybe if i color this you can see it more so let me color with the color black and let me repeat the same step so you can see. well if you if you color it a solid color and then you go and um cut it with the outline it'll be a solid cut because you actually colored it so anyways i'm gonna do the same steps here on this side double click this line is too thick so i'm gonna bring it down before i apply it and then click on apply okay so now i have that cut there and I'm going to delete the bottom part, right? Remember, we cut the image. All you have to do is right click and paste. Your image is back. And then I'm going to send this image to the back. Right click and send it to the back. Now I'm going to select my image and that outline that we have here. If you look carefully, the line is there because it's a red outline. Even if I want to color it, I'm going to color it a red color so you can see it right now i'm gonna click here drag my mouse and select the both go to my modify icon and click on subtract all right now that was subtracted and now we have to go back with the knife tool to cut it right here if you're getting confused with everything that i'm doing just stop and rewind the video guys okay so apply and we have to cut that right here as well the lines too thick so I'm gonna bring it down click on apply and that was cut Okay, so everything that I wanted to be out is out from that layer. So as you can see, because that layer was black, I removed everything that was black. Now you're going to choose what your next layer is going to be. To me, I want the layer purple, so duplicate that layer and color that layer in purple. And this layer is going to go right on here. 
and let me select all this and go to my outline uh, icon click on the second option that has the three colors and the first color here has like some lines going going over that means it's a transparent color i'm gonna click on that because i do not like my lines to be red okay so that layer is gonna go there now because we use the color purple we have to remove the color purple from here so again go to select trace area trace by color click on the color purple and because there's not a lot of stuff left i'm actually going to click here right now i selected on single area i'm going to click on all areas that's purple so i can select everything that's purple and click on trace and detach delete and delete let me zoom in again knife tool We're left with this here. If I zoom in on this part there, I don't like how that is. So I'm gonna double click to activate the edit point and I'm gonna click on one of those edit points and just click delete on my keyboard. No, that's too much. Click on these right here, click on delete. And now all them little parts there was um, deleted. Now your next layer, I'm gonna choose black. That's what I want to be next. So again, trace by color, click on the color black. I'm gonna click on all areas cause there's not much left. And I'm going to click on trace and detach. Oh, sorry, let me go back. It's not going to detach it. So instead of click on trace and attach, I'm going to click on trace. Okay. I'm going to click on trace. Then I'm going to just right click and cut out that uh, image and oh, sorry, undo. And let me zoom in. As you can see, when we traced it, it actually left us already with both pieces. So I'm actually going to right click and release compound path. And I'm going to get this piece. This piece is going to go in black. And right now these two pieces are left in two. So I had to, like if I color these pieces, it's two pieces right now. See that? So I'm going to select them both. And I'm going to go to my modify icon and click on subtract. So now it's just one piece, right? This piece is actually in gold and you are done this piece goes there and this will be your last piece it goes right there and you have traced by color and created a layer cardstock image or you know undetached everything release everything and make it out of cardstock and out of an actual image now i'm going to show you all the layers This would be one layer, another layer, another layer, another one, another one, another one. You have created all these layers, right? Now you're gonna be cutting out of um, you're gonna be cutting them out of the color car stock of your choice. Just because her hat and the original image was purple, you don't have to uh, load a purple car stock on your match. You can cut this out of anything. At the beginning, when I told you about your supplies, that I said that if you wanted to get patterned car stock, they have them on Michaels, at Joann's, Walmart, stuff like that. You can actually cut her hat, her hat out of any. Uh, pattern cardstock like those paper pads and put a design here if you don't want to do that you can actually print from home and add a design right here on her hat and i'm going to show you quickly on how to do that let's say all right let's say this so right click copy image go into silhouette right click and paste then you have that image I'm just gonna right click and duplicate that hat so I don't mess up everything. And then you have two different options on to put that background into that hat. 
First option is because we are working in business edition, you do have the property dropper right here on your left. All you gotta do is click on your hat, click on the property dropper all the way here on your left and click on your background. As you can see now it's on your hat. Right here on your fill icon that looks like a paint palette, go to your third option that is your patterns. Click on advanced options, click on your first F so to fix the aspect ratio, right here it says angle, scale, and pan pattern. You can actually scale down your pattern and you can actually click on pan pattern and you can actually move your pattern around on however you would like it to look. Again, you can add anything here of your choice, okay? And then when you are going to glue this layer on when you're putting your witch together this layer will go right here and now she has a design on her hat okay that's how it's going to look now to cut your pieces out all you have to do is go ahead let me add a red outline on that if you zoom in really good here i noticed i left a piece behind you see that i don't know if you can see that that piece when we was tracing was left behind if i accidentally put let me send this back this is why i mean about deleting i don't know if you can see that red outline that little red line that's a piece of when we was tracing if i go send this to cut on my machine that i didn't realize that little piece was there my machine is literally gonna cut that little piece out of that layer so make sure that you're deleting all the little trash behind when you was tracing okay let me actually add a outline color so we can see this right here and now all you have to do is start putting your pieces on the canvas when you're ready to send to cut. Now I'm going to click on the white one because that is the first one. Remember, I have my paper on landscape. I'm going to go to my transform icon and where it says center, I'm going to click that go ahead and center it to the canvas. So as you can see, I automatically center it there. I'm going to click here on the send tab. And uh, you're going to put your settings. So my settings, I like to use blade of six force of 26 or 27 and then speed of four or six and two passes because i'll be using thicker cardstock okay then once you're done cutting your first layer you're gonna go back take that one over there click on this one click to center it go ahead and cut that piece out repeat the same steps over and over and send it to cut um, when I told you guys at the beginning that you can use glitter, metallic, and stuff like that, it's, again, because you can choose how to cut it. If you want her to have a glitter green face, use a glitter green cardstock. You want her hat to be a purple metallic and stuff like that, use your metallic cardstock. You want her buckle here to have glitter or metallic. Again, use whatever um, cardstock of your choice. And like I said, you can also print them out. All right, so let's put this together. Let's put this uh, witch together and see how it turns out. And now to put your project together, all you're going to need is your foam dot or foam board. Like I said, I'm using foam board. I'm going to cut it into little pieces and I'm going to adhere it with hot glue. Like I said at the beginning, the reason why I'm using foam board is because it's thicker and it gives it more dimension. But again, if you don't want so much dimension, just use your regular foam dots or foam squares. But you can see the difference if you want to go ahead and do two different projects, one with the foam board and one with the adhesive dots and see which one you like best. Add your foam pieces more into the center of your project, not all the way to the edge because you don't want them to be so visible. I mean, you're not going to be able to help it. People are still going to be able to see like whatever you put for that dimension, but don't put it so much to the edge. All right, guys, here is here's the final result. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to join my free Facebook craft group. It's called Andrina's Creation Crafting Lounge. If you make a project like this, I would love to see it. Go ahead and post it over there. We would like to see. Uh-oh, what happened? Ha, huh, nothing happened. Guess what? Pat yourself on the back because I have added a bonus clip. I'm going to be showing you how to add these flashing lights 
on your projects are you ready to learn this if you have made it this far comment down some blue hearts i would like to see who made it this far so let me show you how to add these lights so all you have to do is add some circles or an opening in the back of your layer as you can see the black layer already has the circle so all the way the our first layer which is our white one that's where we have to add the openings all we have to do is center these two layers so i'm going to go ahead and select them both go to the transform icon and click on center okay now remember that i need the opening in the white layer but i need the black layer so i know exactly where her eyes are at okay now the lights that i'll be using i like to make the opening of 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 and all you have to do is come over here on your left grab the shape of an eclipse make any size here on your screen and then here on my width i'm going to type 0 0.5 and enter and on my height i'm going to type 0 0.5 and enter i'm actually going to color that purple so you're able to see it here on the screen and then i'm going to come over here and put it place it over one eye as you can see now i'm not able to see exactly where the opening of the original eyes are at so while my circle is selected i'm still here on my fill icon where it says transparency i'm going to go down on the transparency so here i'm able to see the eye and i want it to be very centered so I think that is perfectly fine there. Then I'm going to right click and duplicate this circle and I'm going to move it right over here, making sure it's right in the center, okay? And that is how it's looking right now. Let me zoom out. I do not need this layer anymore because I want the opening to come on here. I'm going to drag my mouse and select all three shapes. Go here to my modify icon that looks like the rectangle and the circle and I'm going to click on subtract. And that's it, I made the opening. So now when this goes on here, I'm going to be gluing the lights behind here, all right? So let me put it together so you can see. So these lights are called balloon lights. You can find them on Amazon. I use the colors of the multicolor ones and the white color one. They come with a little tab in the back that you have to pull and when you, when you wanna turn those lights off, you have to put the tab back on. All you're going to do is add some hot glue around the circle of her eye. Uh, here, the light, and that's it. So you're going to do, repeat the same steps with both eyes and then adhere it to it. Make sure that it's really centered. And that's it, guys. You're done. All right, guys. Now we're really done. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I hope you guys did enjoy this bonus clip in there. Don't forget to follow, like, and share. Don't forget to comment down below any other tutorials you would like to see from me. Don't forget to follow me on all my social medias on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. I'm usually live on TikTok, so if you want to go ahead and watch me all the time on TikTok, all my handles are Andrina's Creations. Don't forget to go ahead and join my free Facebook group, Andrina's Creations Crafting Lounge on Facebook. It's a free group you must answer all three questions to get approved and i hope everyone's having a blessed day guys and i'll talk to you guys later bye bye